But let me go on to some of the key people in the Turkish legal system. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with lawyers. Lawyers have to be professionally qualified. Correct. And you go to university for what, four years? Four years, and we have one year compulsory training scheme. Yes. Um, you then have notaries. Now yes. we have a separate video about notaries, but how would you describe in one sentence the job of a notary? Uh, notaries are the trustworthy people, just uh, who are like a, a confirming the paperwork, confirming the signature, and also in some certain areas they have the right to, uh, not right, I, I would say, uh, they have to do some contracts and some sales, like a vehicle sales. Yes. So, so, so would it be fair to say that basically the notary in Turkey, his job is to witness signatures and, and, and say, yes, I confirm that this person signed this document on this day. Correct. Plus the law gives them the duty to witness the signature of various types of contract in particular. So things like sale of cars, um, that is work that has to be done by a notary. Correct. But the notary is not there to give legal advice to no. the people. No, it's not won't. like, say, in France, where the notary is a very, very skilled lawyer who often will give advice, no. um, and nor does he handle the money. He, do, he doesn't, you know, if you're buying a house, you don't pay the money to the notary and the notary holds it until the sale. Mm. His duties are, are limited. Yeah, very limited. And to be frank, in Turkey, um, it is very unlikely that you will see the notaire at the yes, uh, office. as I have discovered. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, they are not really monitoring the no. uh, the wording each time by themselves. They usually have their like uh, assistants, and they are doing the paperwork. Basically, we usually call like a confirming the signature, witnessing the signature, and some sort of contrast has to be dealt with, uh, by them. What they interfere in at the stage of the contract, if there is something which is against to uh, the codes and uh, like uh, some rulings then they cannot make the contracts uh, yes. in that room. They need yeah. to make sure that it, it's legal. Uh, it, is, it is legally compliant and that, it, and that it ticks all the boxes and says it has all of the clauses it has to have Correct. in it. The, it might be a rubbish contract and it might be totally unfair. Yeah. That isn't their job. They're just no. there to make sure that you've got all the bits in that you need to have. Yeah, because we have the freedom of contracts. Yes. Uh, uh, they don't really interfere the uh, content. Uh, in terms of like a negotiation part, but they just interfere. If there's something against the codes, then they cannot do that. Yes, yes. And it's interesting you say about the notary not being there. I was absolutely mm -hmm. surprised uh, when I first went into a notary and came out with a document that said, you know, I had signed this document in the presence of the notary who gave faith that it was such <laughs> and such. I hadn't seen a notary at all. Yeah, it was yeah. Done by some clerk. They, yeah, they are not at the. And most of them, even they are not in the same town either. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's the notary. Um, judges, mm -hmm. um, judges are professionally qualified. They're all lawyers. Correct. Um, I would say the the civil court, uh, sorry, civil court judges are all like uh, uh, lawyers. But yeah. the, in the administrative court, they don't have to be graduated from a, a school of law. They could be in another. Uh, certain like uh, faculties okay. uh, but the other of the administrative course they should be all lawyers yes and they do they, they study to be a lawyer and then they make the decision to go and do judges exams and become a judge yeah actually what happens is when you graduated you can choose either to be a judge or a prosecutor or a lawyer uh, or after being lawyer for a somewhat like a some period then you may decide to become yes. a, a judge so after the graduation, uh, they will have an exam. If they pass the exam, they will have uh, one year compulsory training. It was two years, but I think it's now one year. Uh, and then they become a uh, judge and prosecutor. And so, of course, that means that you have a lot of very young judges. Yes. 25-year-old judge. Unfortunately. Who, who's, who's never worked <laughs> Yeah, in they his are life. not very well experienced. Yes. Uh, but, but because of the need, because we have a really like a huge workload at the course, so they are just becoming judge, uh, yes. just after their uh, training contract, but uh, yeah. But this perhaps explains why you have so many appeals. Exactly. Um, so people need to be alert to that, especially if they're from countries where judges are very experienced. They, they need to be alert that if you come to Turkey, maybe you will be dealing with a baby judge, and if you are, almost certainly the case will go to an appeal. Yeah, yeah. I would say so.
What else do we need to tell our viewers about the legal system in Turkey? Um, I think this is maybe the same in every country, but if you have a legal dispute, obviously the lawyers are the key people uh, to help you out. Um, and also in Turkey, you might have difficulty to understand the system because of the lack of like a um, language, like at the official uh, places and the courts. Um, so you may need to have a proper like a English or your language speaking uh, lawyers yes. to be involved. And uh, you need to be a little bit patient because uh, you shouldn't be expecting the court cases uh, completed as fast as your home country. It may take like, some time. I think you're very optimistic about how long it takes in other countries to deal with court <laughs> cases because every country I go to, they say, well, unfortunately, our legal system is very slow. I don't <laughs> think Turkey is any slower than yeah, many of the other countries. I think it is something that clients really bring up. Whenever they come to Turkey for a court mm. case, they would always say, oh, in our home country, it should be more uh, faster. Well, so I'm, <laughs> this not, is maybe I'm not me. sure that's true. <laughs> um, and, and you mentioned two very good points. Mm. One is that people will have difficulty understanding the system because it is different from their system and exactly. you just assume things are going to be very similar. Uh, and of course the answer to that is they should buy your book, <laughs> yeah, uh, How Things not? Really Work in Turkey, because yeah, that sets out in hundreds of pages exactly how everything works. Yeah. Uh, but that aside, um, the um, need to have a lawyer who speaks your language I think is critical isn't it? Critical. Someone who really what you're looking for is a lawyer who understands the Turkish legal system but can also explain the ways in which it differs from your legal system. So ideally a lawyer who's got experience in both. Yeah I, I totally agree because the ex expectations of the clients might be like a significantly different. I mean they were as an example, they are expecting a huge compensation for a like a psychological damage. But in Turkey, it is not like that. Yes. So someone should be, if a lawyer says to you, okay, you will definitely get a like a compensation for the psychological damage, they may not be referring your expectations. Correct. So uh, the, the lawyer should be really uh, yes. have the ability to compare your system at least a little. Yeah. And when it comes to lawyers. Um, you have obviously to charge fees. Are your fees freely negotiated with the client or is there some sort of tariff that you must follow? Uh, we have tariffs, uh, two types of tariffs actually. The first one is uh, declared by the uh, Turkish bars associations uh, and every year it is renewed in like a, uh, the first month of the year we are renewing it. And the lawyer cannot charge below that tariff. Be legal to charge less. Yeah, exactly. So you should be billing the client at the minimum of that tariff. Uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, tariffs which is declared by the local laws that that lawyer uh, based in. For example, in Istanbul, Ankara Bar, or Mula, or as Mula here. Bar. Yes, obviously. Uh, and this is for um, like a um, we call it like. Not minimum, not maximum, but this is uh, the tariff that you can apply. A guidance. A guidance, I would say. And this is more or less the lawyers are keeping in that uh, level, the yes. charging uh, yes. fees. Yeah. Just as an example, if you're dealing with a court case here, uh, the lawyer would normally take a percentage of the court case. Uh, if the court case is valued by like a... Uh, Money, obviously, yes. yes, there is a percentage involved, but yeah. some cases it does, doesn't have anything to do with the money. Of so course. in that case, there are fixed fee basis. But in a, a claim, for example, for a debt, um, yeah. what sort of percentage would the lawyer charge? Uh, the minimum tariff, I would say, approximately like a nine to ten percent. Actually, it's a uh, variable rates uh, depending on the amount. Yes. So it's starting from twelve up to like and uh, this can into one percent. Um, but for like a regular court cases, I would say 10, 15, 20 percent depends on the area. And if you just want advice from a lawyer where you're going to take two or three hours of that lawyer's time, uh, how much per hour would you say would be typical for a lawyer who mm -hmm. was, you know, spoke, several, spoke your language? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, at least like a two hundred dollars or something like a yeah, dollars an hour. Dollars an hour, I would say. But time, uh, time basis work is not very uh, 
common. Because you normally have a price for the job yeah. or, a, or a percentage of the result. Yeah, normally the only uh, international uh, law yes. companies are working on a time basis. Yes. Bashak, thank you very much. You, I hope the audience found that useful. If Thanks. you did, please uh, like this video or follow this channel. And of course, don't forget to buy our book, <laughs> written by Bashak and myself and a couple of other people, How Things Really Work in Turkey. Um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.